I'm David Gray Hammond. I am a white male of Mediterranean descent in his early 30s. I have a beard, a lip piercing, uh, ear gauge, and thick rimmed glasses and a shaved head. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about autistic people and addiction. It is a topic we have covered in live streams on Academy before. And uh, today I'm here to just do a bite-sized piece with some basic information about autistic people and addiction. So what is addiction? Uh, there's a lot of definitions of what addiction is, um, but I would like to talk from my personal experience of what I find addiction to be as a recovering substance user or psychoactive drug user. So for me, addiction was a compulsive and all consuming need to be under the influence of psychoactive substances at all times. Um, I could not cope with the world without opioids, benzodiazepines, uh, spice. Um, I used various drugs and uh, it, as I said, it became a compulsive need to keep taking substances and to take more and more of them as my tolerance increased. As you would expect with my increasing substance use, it led to adverse effects for my health. Uh, it had adverse effects on the relationships in my life and Ultimately, it could have killed me. Um, but despite all this, I found it incredibly difficult to stop using substances. Um, I am also autistic, as you have probably worked out by me being here on Academy. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that made addiction unique for me as an autistic person was my approach to psychoactive drug use. So I didn't just take drugs. I treated myself like a science experiment. I kept journals of what I had taken, what quantity I had taken, what combinations I had taken them in, um, and how they affected me over time. And this attitude of treating myself like a science experiment was very prevalent throughout my years of psychoactive drug use and it only served to increase the risk of harm to myself as I tried to find the boundaries of what my body and mind could handle. So why, why do people fall into addiction? Um, Truthfully, I have found in both my professional and my personal life that the leading factor in psychoactive drug addiction is trauma. People who have experienced excessive amounts of trauma and not receive the support they need find solace in substance use, in drug use, uh, in alcohol use. Um, because fundamentally it takes the sting out of the world and because of that it becomes very attractive to people who are perhaps in a great deal of emotional pain or physical pain um specifically though autistic people are at risk of addiction for a number of factors first of all there is a great deal of stigma around being autistic. It's a heavily pathologized way of being, despite the fact that autistic people consider it more of a culture and identity. Um, we are often mistreated and abused. There are many children who are, at a young age, victimized for being autistic or as a result of their vulnerability from being autistic. They're are quack cures such as miracle mineral solution uh better known as bleach and uh various things that claim to remove the autism from your child up to and including applied behavioral analysis or aba um this mistreatment and abuse uh causes a great deal of trauma and also you we find that 
society disables autistic people. It's its primary form of oppression against autistic people. We, we are living in a world that is not only not designed for us, but does not care that it's not designed for us. And this compounds the trauma we experience as autistic people. There are many misconceptions about autistic people and addiction. Um, the most common one I have encountered is that autistic people don't experience addiction because we love rules too much. And as a result, that leads to us saying, well, I'm not going to use psychoactive drugs. I'm not going to gamble. I'm not going to engage in risky behavior because it's against the rules. But this simply isn't true. Many of us actively seek to defy rules because we live in a world that tries to oppress us, which I believe actually increases the risk of things like psychoactive drug addiction. Um, another common misconception is that we are asocial creatures. In other words, we experience a lack of sociality. So why would we be out in environments where drug use is prevalent? Um, well, once again, this is simply not true because autistic people enjoy leading social lives just as much as anyone else. Yes, we socialize differently, um, as we mentioned in a previous Academy Live, but we still socialize. And for many of us, we will try and socialize with people of other neurocognitive styles. And that can take a great toll on your energy levels, your spoons. Um, you have to do a lot of energy accounting to socialize, um, even if you want to socialize. And as a result, uh, we may use things like ecstasy, cocaine, um, party drugs, typical party drugs as a sort of spoon extender, and also to reduce the sensory overload and give us better control over our sensory experiences when we're out in social situations. How do we help autistic people with addiction is a question I get asked a lot. Um, the primary way that we can help autistic people who are experiencing addiction is to help them understand themselves. So many of the autistic drug users that I have worked with um, don't have an understanding of what their needs and boundaries are because they've never been allowed to. So we can teach them about things like monotropism, double empathy and burnout. Monotropism being the idea that we have limited attentional resources and our brains tend towards singular attention tunnels. Uh, double empathy are uh, the difference in our communication styles across neurotypes and burnout, which is quite commonly known in the autistic community as the result of spending more psychological energy or spoons than we actually have access to, leading to a state where we can almost appear to become more autistic and withdraw into ourselves. It can lead to shutdown, meltdowns, and in some cases it has been known to lead to darker outcomes such as suicide. We can take this information and use it to help autistic people create and respect boundaries in their life. When autistic people can create and respect boundaries in their life, they are much less likely to need things like psychoactive drugs up to and including alcohol. Um, it's vital that we teach aut autistic people that it is okay to say, I can't do this. I need help with this. I am struggling with this because we live in a society that so often expects us to suffer in silence. And this is a very unfair way of living. The fundamental thing to remember about addiction is that it is a symptom of an unmet support need. It, it arises, I believe, because people may have a predisposition towards addiction, 
But then when their needs are not being met, it seems inevitable that they will try and meet those needs themselves. And psychoactive drug use and psychoactive drug use can offer something to numb the pain of existence when existence is too difficult to cope with. If we want to reduce the amount of psychoactive drug use, or more accurately, reduce the levels of suffering from addiction to psychoactive drug use, we need to create a society where autistic people are respected, treated fairly and equitably, and can live the lives that are comfortable for them. To do this, we need workplaces to understand neurodiversity and not just on a superficial level. We need the systems that help us with things like mental health and addiction to understand neurodiversity and not just in a tokenistic way. Autistic people need to have a voice in the world and that voice needs to be respected and listened to. That brings me to the end of today's Bite Size. I hope that this has been helpful to you. And uh, for more information, you can follow my personal Facebook page, Emergent Divergence. Um, and you can also find previous lives on the topic uh, through the Academy YouTube channel and on the Academy Facebook page. Thank you.